And just like that, October, donezo. November, here we are. You know what that means. Today, I'm gonna be sharing with you the Fast Five. Five skincare products that I have been dabbling with at least over the past month, if not more. The name of the game for today's reviews is going to be moisturizers because y'all know me, I'm a big fan of moisturizing from head to toe and headed into the colder months, moisturizers become something that a lot of people gravitate more towards because our skin is just a lot more vulnerable to dryness as the ambient humidity drops. I love Gold Bond moisturizers. I especially love like their retinol one, their eczema one. I saw they came out with this new Age Renew tight and firm body and face lotion. I think all of their moisturizers actually, now that I think about it, it has urea in it. Now, urea is a great ingredient. I think it's underrated by and large. It's naturally present in your skin. It's hygroscopic, meaning it helps improve water retention. This is great because when the water content in your skin is optimized, then the natural turnover processes ensue a lot more efficiently because the enzymes that conduct those things require water. And when the water content drops, then that all slows down. And that's why you get dry, dull, rough skin and the barrier integrity is compromised. Urea is also really helpful for softening and gently exfoliating buildup of dry, rough skin. It's a great ingredient if you have keratosis pilaris. It has dimethicone and petrolatum. These are great ingredients for reducing transepidermal water loss, which ultimately will optimize water content in your skin when there is less of it evaporating out as readily. One thing that drew me to this product in particular, not only because it's new and I love Gold Bond, but it has ubiquinone, otherwise known as coenzyme Q10, an anti Oxidant that when applied topically has a decent fighting chance of getting into your skin and helping with the whole burden of oxidative stress as we go throughout our day and are exposed to environmental aggressors. It also has magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. That's a stable form of vitamin C, an antioxidant. Now, whether or not once it's in the skin, it converts to ascorbic acid is a question mark. But at any rate, it's probably helpful for reducing oxidative stress in the skin, helping to defend against those damaging free radicals that not only prematurely age our skin, but can really compromise barrier integrity, exacerbate hyperpigmentation. So both the ubiquinone and the magnesium ascorbyl phosphate not only are going to be helpful for sort of supporting the needs of the barrier as you go throughout your day, but also defending against perhaps hyperpigmentation and allowing that to clear up a little bit faster. It's a fragrance-free lotion. It can be used on both the body and the face, which is something about Gold Bond I really appreciate. They go ahead and market their products that way. Y'all know I'm a big fan of the efficiency of having a face and body moisturizer. So that's wonderful. This is free of fragrance. It's not as thick as say their eczema relief with colloidal oatmeal. It's not as thick as the age renew retinol, which is a huge favorite of mine. So for those of you who like something a little bit more lightweight and consistency, you might enjoy this. It does have a nice hydrating effect and smooths out the appearance of dry, dull, rough skin. I like that it absorbs quickly into the skin. So you put it on ideally after you get out of the shower or bath, that's the best time to moisturize. Once you put on your pajamas or whatever, it's not as though your clothing is sticking to you. It sinks down pretty efficiently. With age, our epidermis atrophies. It gets thinner. Our skin becomes more vulnerable to water loss. As a result, the skin can take on this sort of crepey, finely wrinkled appearance. And of course, a big part of that is related to loss of collagen, elasticity, and the deeper layers of the skin. But moisturizers can help improve the appearance of that, albeit temporarily, simply by improving the water content and having a firming effect on the topmost, outermost layer of the skin. This isn't going to replace loss volume in the skin per se. It's not going to lift prominent sagging. Say you've recently lost a lot of weight and you have some laxity, some loose skin. This of course is not going to lift that up. But when we're talking about that crepey appearance, this definitely can improve the appearance of that. I really enjoyed this. And if you were wondering, is this any good? It, it is good. I honestly, Gold Bond, they, they really do a good job with the moisturizers. I, you know, they're often known for the foot powder, right? People who know about Gold Bond moisturizers, they're loyal. Okay, so CeraVe has a few newer renditions of some of their moisturizers with sunscreen, which I reviewed for you guys this past month. They came out with some new tints of their mineral sunscreen 
screen. And they also are now offering an AM facial lotion with a bumped up SPF 50 versus SPF 30. And I really have enjoyed this. So it's a hybrid sunscreen. It's got zinc and some chemical filters. It does leave a bit of a white cast, but I've said this before, when it comes to sunscreen casts, an all mineral and inorganic sunscreen that does not have any organic, aka chemical active ingredients, tends to be the castiest. And organic, aka chemical sunscreen, typically does not have any cast. A hybrid has a little bit of a cast, but it's not as intense as a all mineral sunscreen is, in my experience. And this falls in line with that. The base is a really good daily facial moisturizer. Ceramides, which are lipids naturally found in skin's outermost layer, also has hyaluronic acid, which is hydrating. It has niacinamide, an antioxidant that's good for redness, dark spots, the moisture barrier. Easy to tolerate around the eyes. And I want to draw your attention to this because you do still need to be wearing sunscreen in the colder months, even if it's cloudy outdoors. Ultraviolet radiation, you know, it still has access to your skin, but you're probably not spending as much time outdoors. You're not getting sweaty. You're unlikely to be going swimming. So the need for like a water resistant sunscreen, not quite there. You, you really need something that is not only going to protect from ultraviolet radiation, but also is going to be a moisturizing. And they did, they did a good job on this. I, I really enjoy this. No pilling. It's not clumpy. It doesn't peel up off the surface of the skin. I've had great luck with applying this, using it. I really have enjoyed it. We talked a little bit about ubiquinone, of course, niacinamide, magnesium and ascorbyl phosphate. These are antioxidants. But then there's also glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant of interest for hyperpigmentation in particular. I have a whole video about topical glutathione as well as oral glutathione. You need to check that out because I go into detail with regards to the studies behind oral glutathione for hyperpigmentation. But I'm always on the hunt for products with glutathione in them. And you guys recommended this APLB. This is a Korean brand, APLB. And so I decided to try their glutathione niacinamide body lotion. And I have to say, this is almost like an antioxidant serum. It's a pretty lightweight, fragrance-free lotion. I have comfortably used this on my face, although it's not specifically marketed in that way. Not only does it have glutathione, but it also has niacinamide. So these are good for defending against oxidative stress, helping ward off the stressors that exacerbate hyperpigmentation, help support the needs of the moisture barrier, and defend against those free radicals that would prematurely age the skin. It has Saccharomyces ferment, which is hydrating and contains anti-inflammatory compounds. It also has a variety of compounds from Centella, specifically metacasic acid, asiaticicide, and asiatic acid. These show promise for not only warding off against oxidative stress, but for helping support the needs of healing pathways. I happen to think that this particular lotion is a really good value, especially if you lean into it as more of an antioxidant serum. It's thicker, a little heavier than like a typically marketed serum would be. That being said, I think it's a great option. If you're looking for something a little bit more affordable, a larger size, I have really enjoyed that one. I look forward to trying more from this brand, this line in particular. I recently ordered their sunscreen, so stay tuned. I will be chatting with you guys about that at some point in the future before the end of the year. Speaking of Korean skincare, earlier this year, I started using this Rice Probiotics Overnight Mask Barrier Jelly from a bib and I've recently reintroduced it into my routine. So this is a clear colorless jelly-like texture, thick, very thick. It really does what it kind of markets itself as doing. It is great for your skin barrier. Fragrance-free, it has rice ferment, Saccharomyces ferment, no niacinamide. I highly recommend this if you are going through a bout of sensitivity, redness, peeling, irritation, because it is so soothing, so supportive of the needs of the barrier. It's like a little cushion to your skin. It is a little sticky, I would say, in terms of the texture. It takes a long time for it to really dry down and absorb. As you're applying it on, it almost looks like you have this thin sheet of cellophane on your face. It's like really good at reducing water loss. What I like about this and how I would recommend considering using it is in the retinoid sandwich as the top coat. So retinoid sandwich, 
sandwich, if you're not aware, is a way to moisturize the skin while using a topical retinoid to reduce dryness and irritation. You put a moisturizer on, then you put your retinoid on, and then you put another layer of moisturizer on. I don't suggest putting this one on first because it is a thick barrier jelly, so you might not get adequate penetration of your retinoid. But as a top coat, once your retinoid has dried down and absorbed into the skin, applying this over, it really does dampen down transepidermal water loss and reduce that stinging, that burning sensation that you might experience, especially on the cheeks. There are a lot of blood vessels here. It's an area of the face where people are more prone to experiencing burning, stinging sensitivity, flushing, blushing. You don't need very much. A little bit goes a long way. I haven't used this around my eyes. I've mostly just used it to the rest of my face. Arguably one of the best products I have tried this year. All right, and then last but not least, I recently talked about this in a vlog. It's a moisturizer that I have recommended across several videos and I recently repurchased it and have been using it here and there. I mostly have been using it as like a hand cream. It is the E45 cream. So this is great if you have eczema, sensitive skin, kind of the epitome of a bland moisturizer. It has white soft paraffin and liquid paraffin. Both of these are great for reducing water loss. I wanted to buy this and start using it again and talking about it because I believe it's available for people in different countries throughout Europe. I know most of what I recommend is either US based or you know Korean, Japanese, but if you are looking for a moisturizer to get you through winter and the colder months this year, especially if you have atopic dermatitis, consider this one. It's a really good, very rich cream. Great for atopic dermatitis. Now it does have lanolin. Lanolin is moisturizing. It is a potential allergen. It's not as common of an allergen as was once thought. It's more common as an allergen in people who have something called stasis dermatitis of the lower legs, but you can develop allergy to it. So just be aware of that. It's, it's pretty heavy. I tried it on my face. I found it a bit uncomfortable on the face, but as a body moisturizer, it's a great option, especially for dry, rough elbows and knees. Really does a good job lubricating the skin surface to reduce friction. I've used it a lot on like my ankles. My ankles get really dry because I run the sweat and the friction and all of that dries out the skin there, leads to just discoloration. So this is great to lubricate, hydrate, reduce water loss. All right, so that's a wrap up with regards to what I've been trying out this past month. I hope this video was informative to you guys who are maybe curious about different moisturizers. Maybe you were just curious about these products in particular. So hopefully this was helpful to you all. Make sure you check out my recent video reviewing the CeraVe sunscreens because I show the different tints and everything. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that video on the end slate. So if you're interested in watching it, tap on the end slate thumbnail and it'll take you right to that video. But I hope you guys are having a great first day of November. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.